So if we want a carbon-free world, uh, we've got to focus on the stability of the grid and you've got to use it efficiently. We are trying to move one step closer towards a more dynamic grid, uh, one that's more capable of reacting to change, especially now that we are moving to more renewable energy sources such as uh, solar and wind. And we need a more dynamic grid so that when a cloud covers those solar panels or when the wind dies down, that we still have ways to cope. This project was looking at a huge opportunity that's in the cold supply chain where refrigeration turns on and off all day but it's not controlled with the wind or the solar and what we're trying to do is to match those requirements. Well the Tesco project uh, came around because we were looking at alternatives for demand side response and Tesco are one of the few large groups that have got sufficient interconnection with all its fridges to be able to control them from a central source. And what we've done is used an IoT platform, Internet of Things platform. So every single case in Tesco's got a number of temperature sensors. We're sending all that data back to a, a control centre. And then what we then try to do is then, then develop a, a control system which says, well, if there's too little load on the grid, we need to turn everything down. We need to do it without breaking the equipment, without breaching food safety, and at a level that is sufficient to reward Tesco for the investment in the system. So we have a unique facility here in, in the University of Lincoln uh, with effectively a Tesco store set up on site. Well, in order to uh, understand the performance of the system, how it's going to, uh, the refrigeration system is going to respond to the demand side response, we have to build uh, what we call it a mock-up system. Uh, here in this store, it's, it's exactly the same as a small store. So we built this mock-up system in order to simulate, you know, the operation and the performance of the system uh, in responding to the demand side response. The whole concept of setting up a store here is totally unique and really valuable for lots of different people to come and do research. The virtual battery we have here is all of the cold energy stored in the food. So what you can see here are four different fridges uh, and what you're seeing are when the refrigerators are off effectively. So here, normal operation, the refrigerator is going off, it's hit a threshold at which the food would be unsafe to stay for too long and then we're, uh, we're cooling the refrigerator back down and over this time period the energy is being displaced. So this is what we mean by a virtual battery. Providing the fridge is running at the, an optimum condition for a demand side response, we've got at least 30 minutes before we would cross the barrier for food safety. The trick now is selecting which fridges in which stores are available for demand side response. So there are two key algorithms that are operating here. Uh, one is what's called a candidacy algorithm. So it's working in the background in real time, all the time, identifying fridges you can, you can turn down so that when an event happens, uh, the system exactly knows which ones to take down. The second part, which is the really clever bit, is uh, using what's called distributed AI. Uh, now, what we know from a fridge is it goes through what's called a defrost cycle four times a day. And what you do, you take the data from that defrost cycle and then from the rate of temperature change, when you turn it off, you know the thermal inertia. If the temperature changes very slowly, it's high inertia and those are the fridges you want to turn off during a, a demand side response event. Tesco allowed us to use this data from the stores and to do some small experiments within the stores. We've seen that we've been able to optimise the operation of, of the refrigerator and that we've been able to run this algorithm on top. The University of Lincoln was very well placed to take hold of this Innovate UK uh, programme and actually deliver a driving force to deliver the project. This is a wonderful example of an interdisciplinary project. No one school within the university could have done this project and it's only by putting different pieces of uh, skills in the university together that we can deliver it. So this is completely unique. That's the first time it's been done anywhere in the world.